Welcome to The Secret Art of Business. I have the pleasure today of welcoming Dr. Melanie Korn to the podcast. Thank you so much, Melanie, for your time today um, and talking to us. Absolutely. Happy to be here. That's great. Um, if you do not know Melanie, you probably should, because she is a president of the Columbus College of Art and Design, uh, one of my favorite institutions in uh, Columbus, Ohio. And I'm also super jealous of just your career path in a way, because you not only have a bachelor's degree in art, you have a master's degree in art, and you have a doctor's degree that takes you even to the level that you're at now. And the fact that you um, have one in art history, that's the part that I truly <laughs> love. That was like one of my favorite parts of going to college was art history. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, because you're like, I'm just going to stay here. We're going to kick it <laughs> off, though, by uh, you just talking about CCAD. What would you like people to know about it? Great. Thank you. So CCAD um, is a fantastic institution. I'm so thrilled to be able to be a part of it. Um, I've been here now for eight years. And um, CCAD was founded in 1879, so 145 years old. Uh, it is a um, fully accredited, independent, nonprofit College of Art and Design. Uh, and so we teach a variety of visual art and design fields. We've got about 11 different um, BFA majors in everything from animation to fashion, graphic design, fine arts, uh, you know, photography, film, etc. Uh, and then we have three small master's programs, an MFA in visual arts, and then two newer programs that are master's of professional studies in um, one in retail design and the other in user experience design. So to me, I think the most important thing about CCAD is that it is a place that um, gives students the opportunity to really do what they're incredibly passionate about, live their dreams, get a great foundational college education across you know, a wide variety of liberal arts as well as their uh, creative studio practice and set them up for a life uh, well lived, you know, one that will be both successful uh, with a great preparation for whatever creative career they might choose, but also, um, you know, a life that will be, um, you know, creative and fulfilling beyond just uh, their profession. I love that. And I'm going to even fluff that up a little more by saying that having an art degree myself, you are basically having children walk into, and I do mean children, walk into this institution. And in some cases, they probably just know, I, I know I'm artistic and that's mm -hmm. kind of it. And I was the same mm -hmm. way. Somebody told me I was good at drawing and I'm like, I want to do this. And I showed up at a college and they put me on a path of actually making it into a career. So while a lot mm -hmm. of people think, oh, I'm going to art school, it's not just painting and drawing. It is so right. much more that preps children to um, have a, a very full career and full life. Right. Yeah, I think that's really important because I do think, as you said, you know, there are certainly some students who come in knowing exactly what they want to do, studying that for four years, getting out, getting a job in that thing. Um, but honestly, that's the minority. You know, I think for most of our students, um, they, they may change their major, they may stay in the same major, but you know, um, expand really sort of their notion of that field and what it means to work in that field. And, you know, what a sort of quote unquote creative career is, yes, um, is incredibly broad. I mean, there are so many opportunities, things that most 18 year olds wouldn't necessarily even know about. And mm -hmm. so one of my favorite parts of the job is being able to talk to new, you know, admitted students, prospective students and their parents about really what that wide variety of jobs looks like. Things, you know, like, again, uh, that you might consider uh, when you are that young. Yes, we have alumni who go work for Disney and Pixar. We have alumni who have gallery shows in New York City. But we also have, you know, a lot of alumni working for, uh, you know, J.P. Morgan Chase or Nationwide, you know, right, right. here in the city, uh, or you know, being an entrepreneur and starting their own uh, design firm or their own uh, fashion line, and you really have opportunities to do all of those things. And even students who graduate and go on to a career that might not, on the surface, look like a design job. Uh, most of them are still really pulling on their creative education because mm -hmm. at the core of everything we teach, it's about 
creative problem solving. It's about, you know, being able to visualize. It's about communication, uh, both, you know, sort of uh, visually as well as orally and written. And all of these skills are things they're learning at a place like CCAD and things that they're pulling into whatever that, you know, job might be. Um, one very quick story, but, uh, you know, one of my, um, uh, from the past, one of my sort of favorite stories was um, a student who ended up becoming a, you know, master librarian, but oh, wow. learned that love for a library from her bachelor's degree in photography, because when she was in photography, she learned, she sort of fell in love with the archive and sort of the notion of, you know, sort of um, oh, archival yeah. images and all this sort of stuff. And so, I mean, things like that, where, you know, one might say, oh, well, you didn't, you didn't use your degree, but she would, you know, adamantly uh, disagree. And that right. her career in, you know, in, in libraries is because of her uh, beginning, you know, art uh, degree in photography. That is, that is a great example of how, if you choose to go after higher education, to just be exposed to other things, you're like, I think I want this, but then you see yes. that might be just one tiny bit. And then there's all these other careers that can develop just from knowing what they are, because how could you possibly know what every single career is that's out there? And actually, I bet Absolutely. this person still takes pretty killer photos. So that's always something yeah, you get out sure. of your back pocket. <laughs> sure. um, but going to you, because talking about career paths and things like that, you essentially started with, you know, you know, headstrong with this art history. How did you end up mm -hmm. where you are as a president of a college? Yeah, it's a great question. So it certainly, I mean, you know, talk about not not really knowing all the job opportunities when you're a kid. Um, I certainly didn't grow up saying I want to be a college president. Uh, you know, that wasn't my right. uh, my job that I wanted to be when I was six years old or whatever. But but I will say I did um, uh, grow up in education. Mm -hmm. So uh, my mom was a high school guidance counselor and my dad was a community college teacher for decades and ultimately was an administrator. His background is biology. He taught um, taught environmental biology mostly. And um, I literally sort of grew up on a, on a college campus in many ways. Um, I started my life uh, uh, going to preschool at the community college where my dad taught and he would he would bring me into uh, his uh, bio lab. I know, you know, at least one semester he had he must have had a you know, like 7 a.m. bio lab or something. So he would bring me in. I'd get to hang out in the bio lab on the cool stools up at the counter and uh, <laughs> hang out there for about a half hour before he would then, you know, get his get his uh, students set up on a experiment and then walk me across the parking lot to preschool. Nice. Um, and so in some ways, I never left college. I sort of always stayed. Um, I've always been a lover of education, um, but I did have a more traditional education myself. Uh, I, I, again, I did my um, undergraduate degree in art history. I went to Stanford um, and then I went on to um, University of California, Santa Barbara to get my master's in art history. Thought I would probably end up, you know, going the more traditional university professor route. but. Um, I became a little bit disenchanted with um, parts of academia and sort of mm -hmm. research. And I realized that what I loved about being in a college setting was not so much the, um, you know, the, the ivory halls of academia and uh, sitting by myself writing, you know, dissertations and, and right, books. Right. Um, so that future seemed a little less exciting. And what I loved was teaching and what I loved was really the far more collaborative work of administration. Uh, and so I ended up um, back up in the San Francisco Bay Area and just had an opportunity to uh, take a job working for a dean at California College of the Arts, another um, peer institution to CCAD. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I took that job partly because I uh, knew it would sort of give me a foot in the door to start adjuncting, uh, mm -hmm, to do some teaching mm -hmm. there. But also because I just wanted to get to know um, that the more, again, the more sort of administrative side of of uh, a college, and I really loved it. And so I quickly found that that's where my uh, skill set and passion really was. I, I did teach some as well, but I spent, you know, my day job really was uh, being on the administrative side. And then, you know, sp I spent about 13 years at CCA. Um, over those years, um, moved up in the administration, um, ultimately became provost. And through that time, I also had a great mentor. And he said, 
you know, what could he do to help if this was my sort of career path continuing in this way? Um, and so I had the opportunity to go back to school uh, while still working at CCA, mm -hmm, but I had mm -hmm, an opportunity to mm -hmm. do a, uh, a doctorate in higher education at University of Pennsylvania. And so I spent a couple of years flying to Philadelphia once a month from San Francisco and doing a very cool uh, sort of executive education doctorate in higher education management. And that, I think, really cemented my um, desire for this. And so then when uh, this job came open uh, here at CCAD, it was a great opportunity for me. I grew up in the Chicago suburbs. So even though I went out to California for college and stayed, I, you know, I'm a Midwesterner Midwest, at heart yeah. and still have, still have family out here. So it was a great moment to be able to come back here and um, and be, you know, again, um, a leader at an institution like CCAD in a really great city in Columbus. It's a it's a great place to be a young creative and to be launching your creative career. So that was um, really appealing to me. Absolutely. I, I will agree 100 percent with, you know, right now Columbus is very vibrant and has a nice vibe to it. So it's only going to get better, especially now that we're, you know, I should say now that because we produce a lot of creative people, there's that means there's a lot of creativity happening here. Um, and I and I loved that your your career path. I think that is just really interesting how you just kind of you know so I started with this and just kind of layered on and you found your way. Um, but before even that, before you you know <laughs> while you know maybe shortly after your legs were dangling on the stools at your dad's um, classroom at your dad's classroom, yeah. what did you do for fun when you were younger and you had freedom to just create things? Yeah, that's a great question. So even though I didn't um, major in studio practice by the right. time I got to college, I was definitely a creative kid. And I mm -hmm. loved the arts of all kinds. Um, I tried my hand at sports some, uh, yeah. but you know, that just wasn't, wasn't my jam. Uh, and, um, but I, but I loved the arts of all kinds. I mm -hmm. was in um, art class, you know, sort of all through high school, mm -hmm. but I also was in the band. Um, I, I played uh, the bassoon. I started out playing flute. Oh, my and, goodness. And um, I know it's sort of a, a jump to the bassoon. But I remember at one point when I was in, I think, seventh grade, one of my friends who played the bassoon moved. And uh, suddenly I had this opportunity to say I could continue to be one of the 20 girls playing flute or I could be the one bassoonist. Uh, and so uh, <laughs> I like your thinking. <laughs> I know, right? So I was like, I was like, hey, I can always be first chair. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I switched to bassoon. Um, anyway, but I, so I, I, you know, I did band through high school. I was uh, on the literary art magazine. Um, I um, did drama, and drama was actually probably the most um, impactful thing for me in many ways oh, in terms of how it influenced my career path. I um, was, um, I, I re you know, I was involved in, in high school plays, junior high, that kind of stuff. Again, it's something I didn't really pursue in a serious way once I got right. to college, but it was really important for me to develop a, a stage presence, to develop a, uh, an ability to, you know, be a, a kind of public speaker and performer. Right. I think in many ways, all leadership roles are um, performative roles. And I don't mean that in a, um, uh, therefore they're disingenuous, but I think, right. no. um, you know, it takes a, it, it takes a, a certain stagecraft, I think, to be a leader. And that is something that I developed um, really, you know, through the arts um, as a kid and, um, and was an important part of my, um, you know, childhood. And, and again, I think really helped me, um, do the part of leadership that I enjoy the most, I think in some ways, and that I'm, and that I'm good at, you know, as a, yeah. uh, as an adult. Yeah. And I think that's a great example too, of how the arts are important in yeah. one's career in, you know, in ways that may not be as predictable. It's like, yeah. and I've, I've seen you on stage and I think you're freaking excellent when you are talking to people. <laughs> And that is a valuable trait. And a lot of people say, I am very afraid to speak in public, but you know, what if you even just were the tree in the play, you right. at least know what it's like to have a thousand eyes looking at you and yeah. have a little bit of comfort with that. It's very, yeah. very valuable. Yeah, no, I think it really is. And I, and I think you're absolutely right that, you know, the vast majority of people will not go on to be professional creatives, but 
that doesn't mean that they shouldn't devote a, you know a good portion of their time as kids and as adults pursuing creative practices because Absolutely. I mean not only does it bring joy and there's all kinds of studies about the mental health and physical health benefits uh -huh. of you know a variety of creative practices but though those creative practices give you so many foundational skills for again whatever your life path will be you know whether it's public speaking or whether it's even you know sort of um understanding uh math understanding sort of spatial awareness i mean yeah. all of that um is so connected i think you know one of the things you talk a lot about catherine is uh this you know the the deep um connectivity between our right brain and left brain right? yes. that it's not this you know bifurcated uh two separate worlds that it really is uh, an interweaving and a um a, a generative, uh, you know, connect connectivity between those two ways of thinking of more, the more analytical and the more creative. Exactly. And I think a, a great example that people might be familiar with is when you hear about people that are good at, or yeah, we'll just say good at playing piano or also good at math. You know, it's, right. it's very similar sort of language, but people don't really kind of give credit to either side. You know, they say either you're a good right. pianist or you're a good math person but it's, there really is a connection there you are probably good at both and not yeah. really hugging that <laughs> right and not and not just coincidentally right you know exactly, sort of, uh, yeah, exactly. excelling at one influences excelling at the other and you know i think that's definitely true you know and and you see that a lot too with um you know you 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 hear these stories of these you know like surgeons and you know people who are in these like high stress very analytical you know scientific jobs and you know meanwhile they're also you know master uh you know violinist or something right because right. it is um it is both something that they do for their own again mental health but also mm -hmm. um there is that linkage between you know their what they're what they're doing in both of those practices yeah and it's interesting you brought that up because i do know a number of people that might be um or that are surgeons or might be in that sort of practice and they like to have music playing when they do that so there yeah. is definitely that correlation too it's like you know i have to have both in order to do my one job really well yeah yeah absolutely okay so now now that you're a grown-up um and you are around a lot of creative people so you're you're always yeah. like within uh have that as a touchstone but what do you do personally that is still kind of in that same vein of the music playing or or the creativity in some way what do you do now that's just really fun yeah. and relaxing and really disengages you from your job that's a great question. I, you know, um, whatever it is I do, I probably need to do a lot more of it. Yeah, uh, oh, definitely. Oh, oh, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's definitely a, it's, but it's a busy point in life. Um, you know, in addition to, uh, the job, you know, I've got a family and my son just turned right. 16 the other day. And so, you know, there's a lot of time spent in, in that realm as well. But, um, you know, for me, I think there are a few things that I would say that I, you know, try to do regularly, um, you know, one is um, uh, just uh, spending time doing, um, you know, th uh, doing, let me, how do I say this, like sort of being creative in um, how I think about um, the sort of culture that I'm consuming in some ways, right? So mm -hmm. I think even as a, as a viewer and participant in culture, can you do that in ways that are more creative and not just, you know, sort of uh the zombie watching you know hour after hour of my right, television right. um so you know i certainly uh love to you know hang out and watch a good uh show on netflix but you know but how do i sort of spend my time um differently in some ways and that could be anything from um you know sort of like uh mystery based jigsaw puzzles to Ooh. you know trying to spend more time reading um so there's some of that that is more mm -hmm. You know, it is still more consuming art than creating, but it's trying to do it in, in different ways. Um, another, you know, I think part of it for me is um, doing things. So my uh, my spouse, um, he likes to do um, he creates sort of little like um, fairy houses and villages and you know, oh, no like way. With, found, with found objects, you know, sticks and all this stuff. And uh, and so I don't do it a ton, but um, but when I do do it, I love it. You know, it's just yeah. again, it's yeah, sort well, of like. Yeah, yeah, it's like silly crafting, right? I mean, it's not, no, I'm never going to have a perfect. career uh, in that, you know, by any means. Um, but it's just really fun to kind of, again, spend time, um, you know, it, it's 
you, you I, I definitely experienced those those uh, moments of flow that everyone talks about, right? When you mm-hmm. just sort of get in the zone and you get to create and just sort of have fun. Um, so to me, that's a part of it. And then I think the last thing I would say is um, something I'm trying to do more of is write. Um, I really enjoy um, you know, sort of shorter form essay writing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, it, you know, beyond, I, I, um, I have to certainly do a lot of, um, professional writing, you know, whether it's emails or, yes. uh, you know, again, presentations or talks, but trying to do more that is, um, uh, for, just for fun. So I'm part of, a an, an essay club here in Columbus called the 2020 club, oh, cool. um, where we, you know, get together monthly to have dinner and, um, you know, and a member shares an original essay that they've, uh, written. And so that has been really great to be able to I be a part that. of that. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. And it's, again, it's great to just hear what other people are talking about, mm-hmm. but, um, but to be able to share, you know, your own work. And so um, I've only shared one essay so far, um, but it was, uh, it was a really fun essay to write. It was sort of about being um, a Gen Xer and um, <laughs> I I, about love hear my love. <laughs> yeah, and it was about my, my love of mixtapes. Uh, and so um, I called it the mixtape generation and it was sort Perfect. of, you know, uh, contemplation on both the art and science of uh, making a good mixtape, but also, uh, you know, sort of that, that generational um, meaning, I think, of that, that has sort of gone by the wayside in a lot of ways. You have um, offered some great examples of what people can do that may or may not think that they're creative, because, you know, even Mm -hmm. if we're talking about you know, binge watching a really junky show. It's, it's, it's really you and people like, Oh, that just feels so good when I get to watch this. And it's just basically your body saying, I have to turn off my left side. I have to disengage. And if that's your cheat, that's okay. But there's so much content. I would just like to encourage people to maybe look at something else. And when you're talking about reading as well, I also tell people, you know what, maybe put the business book down and weave in a few fiction books, you know, like maybe do business fiction, business fiction. And I had to do that myself because I have that huge stack as well. And after a while, it's like, yeah, I get it. (laughs) You have to just kind of pick your business book and that's the one you have to go with because there's so many methods. But that that's get, can be a little grueling. So just go to the yeah. New York Times bestseller list for fiction and pick out something that is just yeah. fun and playful. It might be a mystery. It might be, a, you know, yeah. just a, a cheesy love story. It might be something that's historic, but just something yeah. that is different than what you normally read is what offers that expansion in your mind. I think that's so true. And, you know, it's something that I really had to get back to. I read a lot mm-hmm. you know, as a kid and oh, as a yeah. young person. And then, you know, I have to say, you know, over the last probably 20 years or so, I found that I wasn't reading as much. And part of mm-hmm. it, I think, was that reading was sort of almost work. And so it felt like if I'm reading this fiction book, then shouldn't I be reading, you know, something on that stack of business or higher ed books right. or whatever that I'm supposed to be doing? Um, and so I found that I would, you know, sort of avoid reading for pleasure. And it was sort of, it became the extremes. I'm either, I'm either reading for work or I'm going to just zone out and watch TV or something. Exactly. And so, and so I really had to come back to it. And I, I set myself some goals of, you know, um, I think, you know, last year it was like, all right, I'm going to just at least read one fiction book a month. Uh, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. you know, I surpassed that. And so now my goal this year is to read two per month and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm achieving that so far, but it's, um, to me, it is, I think you're absolutely right. It's sort of like, um, finding ways to kind of set that, um, set time for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and one of the things that I have found that has helped me is, um, you know, first of all, I, I am starting to read more books, um, digitally. I know, I know I'm old fashioned, so people have been doing that for a long time, but, um, (laughs) but you know, I, I resisted for a while. So I'm starting to just kind of read more, um, you know, on my phone even, which has been, helpful in terms of just always kind of having it there. But then the other piece is that um, I tend to get kind of bored with a lot of the more business books. And mm-hmm. so I, even though, I, even though I still have a number of hard copies sitting around because people give them to me, uh, usually <laughs> if it's a business book that I really want to read, I will listen to the audio book like, oh, when yeah. I'm driving uh, to work and back because I feel like I definitely digest it better. Um, it's something that is, it can just be on and, uh, and I don't have to, um, I feel like I'm sort of setting aside time for that. So I tend to kind of, I've, I've sort of just, for me, it's helped to kind of make that split where when I'm going to, when I'm going to sit down and read a book, I want to do it for pleasure. And when I 
when I need to consume the knowledge in this book for work, I'm going to, you know, do it on audiobook or something like that. Um, and it's sort of just, it's helped me kind of compartmentalize those tasks a little bit more for myself. Yeah, so, there was a study yeah. done, and I wish I had it at my fingertips, but I remember reading it that when you listen to audiobooks and things like that, and you do something else, even if it's like doing a puzzle, and I'm going to guess driving yeah. as well, you do absorb it more. And I'm not yeah. really sure offhand what that, the science is to that, but there was a study that people retained it if they were doing something that was, you know, yeah. not working, if you will, but they're right. listening to something at the same time. They, for whatever reason, just right. absorbed better. That is really interesting. I would, yeah, I, I, I we should look up that study. I, I know, I, I'm going to look that up for reason too. You know, the only thing I could think was that maybe, you know, when you're not doing something else, your mind you know, can wander away so easily that, yeah. you know, I'm sure you've done this before where you like, you read five pages and then you stop and you're like, wait a minute, I was <laughs> making a grocery list in my head that whole time. I have no yes, idea what yes. I just read. And Absolutely. Uh, so, so maybe there's something about, you know, sort of, uh, <laughs> you know, they, uh, occupying the other part of your brain with sort of rote tasks where, where then it allows your brain to, you know, right. Just book, kind of form some guardrails or something to your mind. Totally. I know. Yeah. No, I do. I mean, I do that with driving. I all, it's funny you say puzzles too. Cause I, I also do that a lot with, with puzzles. So, you know, if I'm doing a jigsaw puzzle, I'm making myself sound so old, aren't I? But you know, but if I'm, if I'm sitting there doing a jigsaw back. puzzle, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, if I'm doing that, I'll also often, yeah, be like listening to a, you know, a, a podcast or an audio book or something mm -hmm. too. And, um, you know, it's nice. It's good. Good way to relax. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm hoping that we have provided people with a lot of great tips as far as how they can yeah. exercise both sides, disengage. And I think too, be, um, we are just very much trained to think that if you're not working, you're wasting time. And when you, yeah. what we're, I think what we've kind of discussed here is it's, it shouldn't really be seen like that. This is actually going to help. Yeah. This is going to make yeah. it easier for you to retain information. It's going to help you come back fresh to what you want to do. So, you know, treat it with as much uh, reverence as you would having to work. You know, this is, yeah. this is just part of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, I love my job, but I'm a big believer in, you know, you, you work to live, you don't live to work. So, Absolutely. you know, I think everyone should have full and exciting lives, whether that's jigsaw puzzles and, uh, and, you know, uh, mystery novels or, you know, uh, skydiving, but, um, but, you know, doing things beyond uh, work, I think is really important. And, you know, those creative pursuits are really critical. Um, one last thing I'll say really quickly is that if, if anyone is looking for inspiration for getting into their creative lives, you know, come hang out with us at CCAD. You know, yes, we are a, a, a degree granting, you know, college, but we have a lot of programming for the community as well. We do Saturday morning art classes throughout the school year. We do creative summer workshops from, you know, uh, kindergartners through, you know, um, uh, adults. And Perfect. Um, come take advantage of those. Come, you know, check out our gallery and talks and lectures and, you know, pretty much almost everything we do is free and open to the public um, when it comes to those types of um, gallery shows and other events. So, um, so come, you know, get some inspiration here at CCAD. Yeah. Come in and dip your toe and you you don't get judged as far as what Absolutely. level of good you are. Because when you think about it, we have everything from like a Picasso painting to something that's Rembrandt. It's just a style. It has nothing to do with it being this is better than this so definitely come and exercise that plus you also have a gallery on campus too so if you really want to just dip your toe in just walk through the gallery and see what other people are doing and just absorb that break that and and stimulate that right side again and and see what is possible see what people are doing yep. so that's that's great yeah. too Thank for you sure. so much for this, doctor. I appreciate it so, me. so much. You have, yeah. I, like I said, you've offered a lot of great suggestions and I, I love that you explained how people can kind of find their way in, onto their creative skill sets that they probably don't even know that they had. So yeah, um, thank you for your time. I appreciate <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do for CCAD and for the Columbus community. It is absolutely my pleasure. <laughs> All right. Take care.